I mean, it's funny. Um, maybe not funny, haha. But um, I'm, yeah. I'm remembering um, a year. No, I think it could be two or three years ago, and I was invited to a party. Um, it's like a small gathering um, uh, happening around the uh, game developers conference, just at some uh, small developers, uh, just like the Airbnb they were staying at. And they had invited a lot of people. Yep. And as I frequently find myself in, when I'm in, in the physical meat space around game stuff, I'm sort of the only non-developer around there. And this was, yep. you know, a nice Airbnb, maybe 20 people hanging out. And, um, <laughs> this guy just started like tearing into me when he found out, uh, sort of the context that I, you know, what I do around games and writing about oh. games. And, um, he was very irritated and offended and sort of like, well, how could you, how could you do that? How could you just like not let games speak for themselves? And I mean, it was just weird because I was like, well, you know, we're both invited guests here. So we're probably have like friends in common here. And yeah. if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't have to, to read it. No. Uh, I, I don't under, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, I totally understand. Like, let, let the work speak for itself, but to be so, <laughs> to be so like, like, I don't know. I don't know like what that, I don't know how, how common that sort of anxiousness is about like, you know, if we, if we let people in, you know, maybe it's that magic thing where people will be disappointed to learn that like, we are not actually magicians. I don't know what, I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, uh, I, I like that. I have a weird, untypical background yeah. where uh, I'm a former like games journalist. So I've never seen that as a negative thing where you have journalists looking into stuff. Yeah. Uh, and both at Dice where we worked earlier and now this news place, we invite people who are curious about games. Uh, so you, you get to take a tour like of the office, uh, see where the magic happens. Uh, and it doesn't feel like weird. But I guess maybe it is in other places. Mm-hmm. Because we've had, I remember we had a family days at Dice where people were taking a tour through like the sound editing room, uh, the, what do you call it, the geomatography or whatever, when you photograph things in 3D and put them in a game. We did that for the family members present. We let them play around in the Frostbite editor. We showed, showed them like the... What do you call it? Game capture. So, like, we were transparent, I felt. And it's the same thing here, where we actually don't even call a, our office an office. We call it a hangout. Mm-hmm. Since we want everyone who wants to come in and have a look, just like, sure, come in. There's, there's nothing, like, secret going on. We're making games. Games are entertainment. They're experiences. They're fun. They're not, like top secret military projects. So I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, that's, I, you know, I don't like to say it because I think it, I mean, that's like the old stereotype around people that are drawn to games. And I don't think that this is, I don't think it was ever exclusively true, but it is still a thing in the air where, uh, you know, it, it could be a place for, uh, socially awkward or aggressively insecure people like where they feel most comfortable. But yeah. I don't think that that's even that unusual because I think like, I mean, you know, what, 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 to me, I feel like, you know, what's really the difference between you take on an avatar, you go on whatever and you'd go do whatever in a game and like you, you set up a Twitter account you set up an avatar and you go, <laughs> yeah. do whatever so I'm not sure why that still is the perception that like games are still singled out as an as, especially a haven for that but uh, yeah. I mean I think to me like that's sort of maybe what wanting to safeguard you know the secret status is but uh, my sort of armchair 
theory is like that sort of attitude has contributed to a lot of like just how entrenched these sort of um, labor problems or the way that they're thought about is because we're just not used to hearing from the trenches and we're not used to hearing non-approved messages. So I don't know. I mean, it always feels like a stalemate thing to me. And I guess at some point it will change, but I know for you, the solution you found was to sort of, was to, to quit AAA, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, And I mean, uh, when I previously I quit a job, I just took the next best thing because I grew up poor. So for me, it's like unemployment is this really scary thing. But this time around, I just went, no, you know, I have 15 years of experience. So I really want to spend it in a place that appreciates that, that think almost the same as I do. Mm -hmm. So I did, I went and like studied what was out there. I didn't take like any job. I so said, I think if you, we're lucky in Stockholm, I guess, because we have like tons of studios, both AAA and Indies here. But if you're in that position, do do that. Like uh, go around, talk with people, find out what their values are. Don't just uh, jump on the next position that's available for you. Uh, it made me happier that I'm working with people who believe roughly the same as I do, that we're only working with games. Mm-hmm. They're not, if like all game developers died in a disease tomorrow, no one would actually miss us, I think. <laughs> we don't save lives. We just make like fun experiences, hopefully make people happy. Yeah. It shouldn't be the secret sauce thing. There's no secret sauce. There are <laughs> programmers and artists trying to express what they have in their head and mostly get depressed when their game is released because they didn't quite make it. Yeah. But after a while, they're like happy again because at least they tried. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, and I think, I think we established like, yeah, you and I are around the same age. Like you can probably remember recently how people were sort of, um, talking about, the the loss of sort of like the middle tier publishers yeah. how it just became this like wide chasm between independent smaller projects and the multi-million dollar um yeah. ones and that was all that there was yeah. and i mean i don't know because I, I i feel like this stuff is talked about so often where it's like the expectation is the smaller publishers, developers, like the expectation seems to be that they are the ones, you know, the people with the least money should be making the biggest creative risks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but I wonder though, like outside of the the creative risks and what they contribute to the um, marketplace, I mean, what do you think like, like philosophically, like, uh, you know, publishers such as as yours or others of comparable size, like, what do you think yeah. they sort of contribute to the, just the, the way games are thought about or talked about, even if it is only among like the most, you know, passionate yeah. uh, game players and it's, you know, they're not household names, but how do you think they sort of, you know, buck trends or shift the way that games are thought about or talked about? I think uh... Like most of us come from a AAA background, uh, and that's why these boutique publishers have shown up in the last years where they want to do something different. And it's like treating humans as humans. Yeah. It's like this <laughs> rare thing in games, which is really weird. So it's, a, it's, it's an interesting concept. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're like, you don't set, like, you don't own a person because they're developing a game, which usually happens. Like, we own your intellectual property. I don't right. know what that means. It said, uh, and so, like, you don't do that. Uh, you realize that people are people and they can have bad days and good days. 
and you like understand that. Uh, we have de developers, as I mentioned, that get depressed when their games are released because the vision in their head didn't actually come through in the game. And like we understand that. And if they want to break from working, that's fine. Because health is more important than work. Yeah. Life, uh, family, yeah, like your family life is more important than work. Uh, you should be able to be yourself when you're like happy with yourself. You can actually create something that matters. So it's that philosophy. I think it's grown up with these mini publishers that find these cool games. Uh, they do that because they want to treat people like people, so they get the people that want to work in that environment. I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I have a I have a question that's sort of uh, I guess it's sort of kitty corner to it. I mean, just thinking about like messages being sent. And, you yeah. know, and coming from AAA, I mean, what, one thing that I find always interesting is just sort of the way, I don't want to pick on just one, but Ubisoft tends to come to mind. Um, yeah. And I don't want to put you in a position to comment on places you haven't worked for or whatever, so you can always just tap on it. Like, I'm loudmouth, so. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just talk a lot. I don't know if I'm loud mouth, but no, uh, I mean, I just find it interesting the, the way that um, AAA studios in particular uh, deny that their games uh, may be making political statements. Yeah. Um, but even when it seems increasingly clear that, like, you know, even if they're not making a statement, like, they're using, like, political context to... Be... I mean, war. War is pretty political. Yeah, you know what's weird is, like, it's so commonplace in games that I wasn't even yeah. thinking of that. But that's true, yes, that's true. It was... <laughs> I, I mean, like, how long do you think that that party line can be held? The, like, they can act as though, you know, they're not saying anything, even when repeatedly asked directly about it. But I don't really believe it themselves, honestly. Uh, it's so strange to me that almost everything is political. Right. So how can you like, take a stand and say, this is not political, but it's about a scenario where Iran is fighting the U.S.? <laughs> it's like, yeah. You, I mean, you maybe you say, I don't want to take a stand, and that something completely different. Right. You can't say it's not a political game. Like, come on. <laughs> well, I was like looking at that, um, that one Watch Dogs game where like it's set in like after Brexit and all yeah. that. And so I don't know if anyone has, I mean, I, I know because that's a company that's run into that sort of stuff before, you know, I think of the previous, like I say, there, there's more than one, but I remember with the first Watch Dogs thing, um, yeah. it, 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 you know, with uh, police cams and uh it, it coming out at a time in the u.s when there was a, a you know just um it, it being suddenly very relevant accidentally and yeah. i think you're right and i don't think it's a shock to say i'm not sure they believe it themselves i think it's more like i always interpreted that as like they don't want to potentially alienate someone who might want to buy it but uh, i never yeah, like, when i thought about like works. games being like a thing of fantasy i never thought of it as like a oh you could play out whatever your political fantasy is and just shoot people <laughs> yeah. i thought it was more like you grab a mushroom and you get really big you know i thought it was a more whimsical kind of fantasy not a not a uh yeah. nihilist fantasy <laughs> yeah no, uh, I mean, yeah, especially the post-Brexit yeah. thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is a political political statement, and maybe you have a choice in the game, we haven't seen it yet, where you can be like a Brexiteer or a 
opposed in force or whatever. But that's still a political game. Um, I've mainly seen the marketing the grandma you can play as. <laughs> yeah, she's good. <laughs> she's good. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that, that's the thing. When they have this awesome trailer concept, yeah. cool characters, why spoil that with going... Uh, yeah, it's not looking at all, but I push my team to like be more. Uh, how did they put it? It's like he wants more statements and uncomfortable games and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it shouldn't be political, and that doesn't add up. I mean, does this feed into some of like, something else you had said, which is that you said games need to be more daring and brave. I'm not sure if this is what you had in mind. I understand it could probably be under that umbrella, but um, yeah. what did you have in mind when you were saying that? I had an example there where like FIFA World Cup is happening in Qatar in 2020, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we have actual people dying there because they're building this, these studios, the stadiums, under like slavery laws. And like, what if FIFA 20 actually had that as a message in the game? You see, like, this studio overview, flyover, and then 15 people died building the studio from, like, just be honest, be real. Yeah. That would have been, like, for me, it would have been amazing. But I know it won't happen, but... We can't advance this medium if we don't take these risks. And we'll always say, like, we're afraid of offending people. I think we already are by <laughs> saying, like, we're not political. Right. Like, I get offended by that, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's just, uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could characterize it as, like, being naive or being immature or, I don't know, because there is also that sliver where it's like, well, maybe they actually just believe that, you know? Like, they're not winking. So sad. What? <laughs> that's so sad that they actually believe that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's possible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I think it's fear of losing on, on like, sold copies. It's consumerism. Because our business is so much based on like number of sales and all of that, mm-hmm. and I think we should move past that. If we we always talk about games as art, and if we want that to happen, we have to take risks. And indie games might take risks, but the majority of people won't play in an indie game. They will play the AAA game. Yeah, and that's where we need to have this courage out there, and they can afford that. So that's my like my hopes in the future where we see games like that. I mean, something I always struggle with is like trying to gauge how, like, I don't know. I mean, these are unusual global political times anyway yeah um and so i can understand uh especially now sort of why video games and uh their 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 problems are uh, more they've taken more of a back seat um yeah i mean i don't know because uh you live somewhere i don't i mean do you have a sense of like whether video games shape national or personal identities out by you in in Sweden? Like, are they on I mean, those kind of radars? Sweden is pretty strange since we make... How should I put this? We make Hollywood games. We make American games. Sweden yeah. is a very... Like, how do you call it? An Americanized country? So it's it's easy for us to create battlefield, if we put it like that, because we understand the American culture. Maybe not inform me if we don't. 
but we think we America do. understands American culture. <laughs> <laughs> it may be you understand it better because you're outside of us, you know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't see. We haven't had like a Swedish game. I, I haven't seen that yet. Maybe a bit with a couple of indie projects, but we mostly do American games here. I mean, when I was uh, when I was out there years and years ago, um, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I guess it just feels like a long time ago. I mean, that was that was sort of an interesting thing for me to find out as an American was to talk to people in Sweden about how they felt about Minecraft and uh, I guess Notch is a whole other side topic and to yeah. itself. Um, but you know, PewDiePie and Minecraft, that being the perception of, of, uh, the, like the exclusive perception of like, oh, that's what, that's what Sweden is when it comes to video games. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm not sure if you would agree with that. I, I think I just wonder like if people have that perception, like what, what nuance is, is lost, um, and not understanding like what else there is to Sweden and, um, you know, the way they think about video games. That's a big question. Yeah, I, like I don't see Minecraft as a Swedish typical Swedish game. Yeah, it, it's it's Lego, uh, and the, that already exists in the physical world. Uh, I don't say it, it was an easy game to make. It's like a wonderful game, but the concept isn't Swedish per se. Yeah, uh, and I think PewDiePie broke off because he was typically un-Swedish. Uh, Swedes are reserved; they don't. Yell or joke or be funny. We're pretty boring. That's why I like it here, I think, because I'm that kind of person as well. Oh, now you tell me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, like, yeah, a typical Swedish game. I mean, we haven't had a war here in over 600 years or whatever. Yeah. We've always been neutral. Uh, We've started discussing like how what we did during World War Two, yeah. where we basically both uh, Nazis and the Soviets just get run through our country to invade a neighbor because we were afraid to actually take a stand. So maybe that would be like a typical Swedish game: the cost of neutra- neutrality. Hmm. But uh, it hasn't happened yet. Right. Well, it's already big enough of a challenge to uh, own whether a game is political, and so that sounds like yeah. that would be it's really hard <laughs> Maybe to that, do. A bit too. Yeah, <laughs> that would know. be another uh, another like uh, another strange uh, neutrality frontier is to to make yeah. that and then not take a stand to 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 back it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It made me think now. Paradox should make a strategy game where, like, Hitler wants to invade Norway. Should you let him through, or mm. do you want to start a war? That would be interesting, yeah. <laughs> Did we just pick a game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue this call after, yes. After yeah. I stop, yes, we'll, uh, we'll hash this out, yeah. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's just, it's a strange thing to gauge, like, because I wonder about, like, the types of labor problems and the other types of growing pains. I mean, like, I think every other field, entertainment field, has gone through the same things, just, you know, on a different timeline. And yeah. it, it just is a little bit of a headache or a, it's it's very dissonant to tell, like, well why are well why aren't these problems changing? Like and, and why does it seem so stuck? And so I always like I look at that sort of like, well, are they visible on mainstream platforms as a way to try to understand like, well, if they were more visible, would that matter? Um I mean I don't know it's hard to tell because like in America, like I you know, I can like my question is like, you know, whether you feel like video games influence Swedish culture it's so hard to tell that here in America because, like, you'll see billboards or ads, and it's like a lot of transit stuff. Like, you'll see ads on buses sometimes. You'll see them in train stations. Yeah. Uh, 
you see them on TV commercials. You'll see them uh, in the movie theater, like, you know, during the trailers. Yeah. Uh, but it seems to be like they are really only influential in, like, pockets on the Internet. Um, yeah. I don't know if it feels differently in Sweden, like if it feels like it's more influential outside of the internet, just video uh, games in general. No, I don't get that like impression here. It's roughly the same here. You get an occasional billboard or a TV ad or a trailer in a cinema, but it's not talked about where it matters. Uh, sometimes you report like the game industry has created this X number of jobs. Right. So, uh, so it's not the actual games themselves that are talked about. It's more they're given job opportunities. But that's not a cultural impact. That's just like a statistic somewhere. So now I don't see them as like impactful here either. Mm. Uh, I often think that we create games for the same audience over and over again. And we always say that we want to expand the audience, but I haven't seen that happen yet. Like even with the like the Wii, that was a, just a temporary thing that happened when everyone was playing tennis. Yeah, and then that went away. Right. So no, uh, I don't see any impact. And then when it comes to labor. There's like the difference with Swedish labor laws, where we have a strong, we have strong unions here. So for us, it's like unionization is already here. So we 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 don't have that discussion. Right. Right. So that's like a bit different from the U.S., where you guys try and start unionizing to get like the labor right. We already have that. I'm not saying we don't crunch here, but it, it's mostly our fault when it happens here <laughs> because we're trying to save our colleagues' ass or our yeah. leaderships, and we don't report that to the union. But if we did, then I think hell would break loose, honestly. I mean, it's weirdly yeah. dissonant, too, here yeah. in the U.S. because, uh, I mean, at least in the U.S. on the Internet, I mean, you'll see that, like, oh, you know, such and such magazine just unionized or there's this new union for... I mean, you know, I'm in media, so I hear more yeah. about those things. And so... Uh, and it seems like every couple of years that does seem to pop up in games. And so there's this feeling online in certain pockets that, oh, unionization is this new trend and everybody's doing it. And what yeah. I've noticed is the pattern is, like, at least in media, is like, uh, people will announce a union and then there will be tons of layoffs or they will just actually just shut that publication down, yeah. um, which is a very discouraging trend. But it's also confusing because, like, I don't think uh, I've posted these interviews online yet, but, like, I, like I'll talk to, like, people who specifically teach uh, about labor issues at various universities. And this just may be a case that, like, you know, academia being uh, just there being distance between like you know what's happening in the working world and what people in academia are aware of. But like all the people I've talked to in academia, their sense is like, is there is there a big push for unionization? They haven't heard anything, so it's extra. Oh, okay. It's hard to no. tell, and I don't know if it's just like these things that happen online tend to stay online or. You know what I mean? It's just, it's frequently confusing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, I don't know if the mainstream thing is the missing element of labor issues in games. I mean, it, it sounds like you were saying more, I mean, I think about this too, you know, like it's an, it's an extremely creative industry, but the conversations can frequently be, I think as you said, like stagnant. And yeah for it being so creative, like people are afraid to speak out, to antagonize and confront. And, uh, are you saying, I mean, maybe both would help, but it sounds like you're saying it's more of a uh, people in the space need to own it rather than waiting for some other spotlight to come. 
Yeah, because, I mean, if you see it from the Swedish perspective, we already have unions right. in the workplace, but we still crunch. We still have these issues because it's not a magic bullet. Right. You have to take the conflict. If you don't, then nothing will happen. Uh, and we haven't reached that stage either. We haven't gone like, no, they'll this year because we're on a strike. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that ever here. We just go, I'm, I'm in the union, and if they found out about my working hours, they'll sue you. But I won't report you to them because I love working here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, if, even if you have a union, you have a right. Yeah. And I think most of us who work in the industry, we're just going, I'm so lucky, so I don't want to mess things up. I don't want to speak out. I don't want to be branded as a troublemaker. So we just keep quiet. And like I was thinking about all of this while reaching out to you. I was going, what if someone like listens to me speaking and says, we will we never work with that asshole again. Uh, and like, I reached the stage where I'm going, yeah, fine. I've done my 15 years, so I can go to some other industry. But if you're a young person and you're trying to start a career, it's tricky. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to cause trouble. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. No, I'm there with you. That's the thing I wonder about all the time. It's maybe Maybe we need to be building time machines more than... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more, more than anything else. Um, yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I think I have just uh, one more question here for you. I know we have sort of been wandering around a number of topics. Um, and so yeah. I, I do wonder, you know, before I ask you this, like, was there anything I sort of shook loose in your head that you didn't get a chance to mention that you wanted to discuss? I don't know. I mean, like, we've been over the place because uh, I felt free just speaking whatever comes up in my mind. It's just a conversation. I mean, I was just saying, like, we just, we've covered a lot of ground is all I meant more than uh, yeah. the, 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 the way we got there. Um, yeah. No, but was there anything else on your, on your mind you wanted to make sure that we uh, talked about or you wanted to get off your chest? No, I mean, be brave, I guess, was my main thing here. Uh, like in both positions you take, the working place you choose to work at, uh, the messages in your games. Like, yeah, it's that thing that I wanted yeah. more to like talk about and get out there. Because most of us, the bravery is difficult. Uh, it's, uh, it's often a source of conflict with someone who isn't prepared to take the same step yeah. as you have. Because maybe you've thought about this for a while and you go, let's do this. But everyone else, it's new for them, so you get this conflict. But bravery, that's what I <laughs> try to push out. <laughs> uh, uh, at the risk of uh, asking you to be poignant, even more, even more so than that, uh, uh, I'll just ask you this um, you know, what do you think video games have accomplished? I think we got the being entertain, entertaining. We've, we've got that. We're pros at that. Uh, but yeah, like, is it enough? I'm not sure. Like, I know that people play games. They get the sense of escapism. They, they are entertained. It's not always like fun and happy, but they get you to think. So we've accomplished that, but I feel we can do more. And that's like make you think, uh, challenge the world, give a message, be, stand up for your message as well. Like, yeah, this is a political game. You might not like the message in here. You might get angry. That's fine. 